What movie f***ed you up mentally? I watched Blair Witch in my early teens with no concept of what documentary or found footage movie was. In my mind it was all real. The last scene was golden. I had a similar experience. I was a naive teen and thought it was all real. I was in tears and shaking with fear in the theater. My best friend and I couldn't sleep that night. My dad, who drove us to and from the theater, knew we were absolutely terrified, but didn't tell us quite yet it wasn't real. Instead he put a pile of rocks outside my bedroom door for us to find the next morning and we both ran screaming and crying out of the house. Good times. Years later I learned to appreciate it, but I didn't speak to him for days. Edit, my dad will be absolutely thrilled that my highest rated comment is about him successfully terrorizing me. Lol I can't wait to tell him. Thanks guys. You have a cool dad lol. Goodwill Hunting. The part where Robin Williams explains to Matt Damon that, although he knows almost everything, he will never know what it's like to look in the eyes of your best friend as he's dying in war or what it's like to lose a wife to cancer. It's not your fault. That got me. Balled my eyes out the first time, and second, also third. Return to Oz. The Disney sequel to The Wizard of Oz. This movie is targeted at children. This movie is f***ed up. It starts with Dorothy getting electroshocks in a bedlam asylum, because no one believe in her stories about Oz. Then she returned to Oz, and then she encountered truly horrific monsters like the Wheelers. The Wheelers, and the big bad is switching heads like you switch dresses and all the heads are alive. And how my god how, is this movie targeted at children? Add that to the fact, that you aren't really 100% sure, if it actually happened, or if it's all in Dorothy's head. Kids movies in the 80s didn't around. Well, if you read the books, it's all really happening. Eventually the family is about to lose the farm, so Dorothy manages to successfully move her aunt and uncle to Oz and live there permanently. Or did they all die in Oz's limbo? Fire in the sky. I saw this when I was 8 or 9. I walked into my aunt's room during the operating scene. Anything and everything that dealt with aliens freaked me out. When Unsolved Mysteries and the X-Files theme songs came on I would lose my mind and become really scared. The ending of this movie still contains the best alien abduction sequence in all of movie history, Imho. Everyone talks about the operation scene as being the scariest or most traumatic part of that movie. While f***ed up, it's not what messed me up the most. The worst scene for me was when Travis fell into that sarcophagus slash goop it filled with a dead guy that they just left to rot. Tossed aside like garbage. Saving Private Ryan. As a child my parents would only allow me to watch Disney movies. And so when everyone was out of the house one night. Since they were at my cousin's house. My cousin's house was right next door. So they usually always left me alone for a bit. I turned on the TV and Saving Private Ryan came on. Thought it was still a Disney movie. And proceeded to watch it. Jesus f*** my tiny brain wasn't ready for that trauma. Yes. This. There is a scene where they take sanctuary in a church, and one of the soldiers just starts to have a mental breakdown and talks about how he misses his mom. She worked late, and would come in to check if he was asleep. He would pretend, so he wouldn't be bother, and he now regrets not waking up turning around, and telling his mom I love you just one more time than he did. This hit me hard, because my mom was going through breast cancer treatment and it hit me on a deep emotional level. Spoiler alert. If I remember correctly he is the medic who dies during the assault at the radio station and keeps calling for his mom. What's eating Gilbert Grape? I grew up in a very similar situation. Like, spookily similar, just a lot less good looking. My mother was overweight, and I just knew she was gonna die in our old house like that. Scared the f*** out of me. Oh man, this is my favorite movie. I can imagine how sad that must have been for you, though. Have you watched it later in life? And I hope that your mother is doing well. Requiem for a dream. Still get bothered by some of the scenes and that. Story time. When I was 14 over 15, my counselors at sleepaway camp told us about this movie and said we would never see anything like it again. They hyped it up for weeks. One night, all 20 of us gather in a small room with probably a 30 foot TV. We were all f horrified as high school freshmen. Only good thing to come out of the movie was my thought, I'm never gonna try heroin ever. Then the next week, our counselors go. We have another movie by the same director, that is equally as f***ed, wanna watch it? Second big mistake, 
Watching Pi. I remember watching Hotel Rwanda as a freshman at my private high school. Embarrassed me because I realized the world wasn't even close to the way I thought it was we were watching that in history class. One kid, one of the classic school poo head bully types, muttered under his breath damn dudes deserve to die. The teacher overheard, and holy flying duck, that was the angriest I have ever seen another person. Kid was only saved from permanent expulsion, because we were his last chance school. We were his last chance school. I can see why. Sounds like a kid, Ted. The fourth kind. For weeks after watching this, it seemed like I would always wake up at exactly 3.33 am, and I was deathly afraid to be outside at night. Couldn't look out my bedroom window at night for months. Read the classic Stephen King novel Salem's Lot. You'll sleep with the blinds and curtains closed the rest of your life. I'm watching all of these by the way. Edit. I feel like I'm going to regret this statement. Edit 2. I'm a huge pussy when it comes to scary movies so some of these will be hard to watch. I watched Interstellar last night and that movie made me want to ask this question. Thank you to everyone suggesting movies. My phone is having a hard time keeping up. One week later. Reddit. How does one cope with self-inflicted delusions? I'm bookmarking this comment. I'll be back in a week with an update. Life is beautiful. Principessa. Buangi are no Principessa. Not a movie, but Black Mirror's Be Right Back episode. I lost my wife in 2011, and I had to stop watching that episode. Black Mirror as a whole, many episodes, were very disturbing, and stayed with me. I remember the one, where a guy's consciousness was trapped in a device and time passed at 1 tenth comma 000 the rate of the real world. He was basically stuck in a featureless room. Then somebody got pissed at him, and left it switched on over a long weekend. Ah yes, White Christmas, S02E04. That one went particularly for long, especially for a Christmas special. Pretty sure it's the undisputed goat episode, although I think the one about the kid being blackmailed by the troll face people me up more. Dear Zachary, if documentaries count, edit, anyone curious about watching it, I strongly urge you not to read any background or synopsis before doing so. Part of the power of this doco is the way the story unravels without any prior knowledge. That movie saddened and enraged me like no other. Then seeing the grandfather break down because of regret that he didn't commit murder, knowing he'd have spent the rest of his life in prison. You can see his lasting pain and that he, wrongly, blames himself. That's what got me the most the grandparents the pain in their faces. 